Settle down, settle down, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Settling Podcast. I'm so excited to be here today because, guys, I know it's been a long break. I know I've taken a lot of time off of my duties here of giving you guys the tips of how to not settle. But just know I'm back and I'm back with a vengeance. There's so many great things happening right now, and I'm excited to share them with you all um, through this platform because I feel like this is where I feel like I can be my most self, like my most Cindy self, my most quirky, fun girl self. I don't like to cast by myself as a fun girl though you know what I mean because there's there's connotations with that but you know we'll get into that later right now y'all see this beautiful woman to my left right here do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself ma'am hello everyone <laughs> thank you for inviting me to be here I'm so thank excited thank you so much for coming the Fumi Monet Ooh, the. yes I the girl to the. you definitely have a the in front of you <laughs> oh, I, I think so <laughs> I I categorize you as a fu- uh, uh, as a Fumi of course you are I categorize you as um definitely uh, a the kind of woman because I admire you oh. you have a lot going for yourself do you want to tell the people Thank you. So, first of all, so honored to be here. This is the podcast I needed in my 20s. Okay, hello. Period. Hello. Um, my name is Fumi Monet, and I am based here in Dallas, Texas. I am a content creator, but I'm also a full-time licensed therapist as well. So, And that's dope. Got a little bit of everything going on, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. But um, I'm really excited to be here tonight to talk to you. I feel like you kind of kept me in the dark a little bit about this. So you think? I, I think, you know, you're trying to keep me on my toes. With- <laughs> I, I do that. Okay. That's something that I do that I'm, I don't know if it's a it's a mistake, right? Or, I mean, it can be, right? Yeah. I think it's because good. some people don't know how to give their raw and honest opinion mm. on camera. They get in front of the camera and they think, oh, my God, a lot of people are going to see me. Now I have to be this certain type of way. Mm-hmm. When I think of it as, oh, I'm in the room by myself with my besties. So like this, it's just it's what it is. Like, I can say whatever I want to say because, you know, people are always going to have an opinion anyway. It's so true. at least I'm not here to perform. So. I know you're not. Okay, look, and I'm happy for that. So, yeah, I just want to go ahead and get right into it now that we got the intros out of the way. So you guys know how we usually start off. We start off with Booked and Busy. And I would like to start off with Booked and Busy by announcing that I am a part of the Class of 2023 YouTube Black Voices Fund. Um, I'm very excited, guys. I'm very excited. I think that this is an amazing uh, opportunity. So YouTube, which we're actually on YouTube right now. YouTube, so much. uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I feel like this is definitely my time to really show more of my creative side again because I love that YouTube gives you the ability to do it with also like providing financial support. And a lot of people as creators don't like talk about enough how important that is, like the finances behind the glitz and glam. Cause like, you know, we're literally like, we have to make our own studios. Yeah. Like I walked in, I said, this is incredible. Really? This is girl. That's what I was going for because I was not ready. A lot of bottles of perfume. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I was like, you know what, like this is what I want to be like my own studio Mm -hmm. and I want to be able to take my studio wherever I'm going, whether I'm in my own apartment, whether I'm in somebody's home, whether I got to rent out of space. Like I want to make sure that wherever I am, I'm able to perform to the best of my abilities because I feel like quality over quantity. Absolutely. And I'm going to use that as the excuses as to why uh, y'all haven't seen me on YouTube lately, you know? <laughs> I've been a little busy, but you know I've what? I've been busy. Let me I have tell been. you something. This girl has definitely invested in her craft. Her craft Thank you. is clearly a priority. Thank you. I really do appreciate job. that. That Doing means, that means a lot. That means a lot coming from what I could view a future mentor. You know, I'm, I'm pitching myself. <laughs> Yo, you know, if you want to take any, any yeah. mentees on. We're in the present. We're in the present. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for Booked and Busy, do you have any announcements for yourself? Oh, my goodness. So, um, for myself, I would say that, once again, congratulations. That's such a Thank you. huge honor to be selected and to be recognized and to be honored. Um, so proud of you. And I love to see Thank creators you. thriving in their field. Yes. Um, I released my, well, we did a restock on my fragrance. Hello, hello. Oh, my God. Y'all must- 
Have we not even covered that she is the fragrance queen? If you go on TikTok, Instagram, wherever you can literally get the notes on what you should be getting for your next fragrance, she got it. The girls love to smell good. I mean, we do. And we know that certain people you can trust, right, with that information. Because I can't even lie to you. I'm part of that party that saw a bunch of girls doing the whole, oh, these are the best perfumes you should wear, when it was really all the stock that I just had. Mm. You know, I was one of those girls that really wasn't that, that, you know. I was just say, mm, it smells like citrus. Mm. Just like wine. That's what mm. they supposed to say. If you don't know nothing, they say, just say, mm. I taste a little bit of citrus. It's just a little bit of citrus. A just little a little bit of, of citrus. Yeah. A little sweetness. Yeah. No, I, I waste my money so y'all don't have to. Like, I will go out Love and smell that. these fragrances. I will be in the trenches yeah. trying them on, telling you if it smells good or not, and just really, like, opening you up to the world of what is out there. Like, you yeah. know, what is out there beyond just what's on the Sephora shelves? You yes. know, there's yeah. a whole amazing world of fragrances, like, from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we just don't know they're out there. That's it. No, that really is because I also know that there's something that they call ouds. Yes. Yeah. I don't know nothing about that. Mm. All I know is that they smell really strong, right? It's a definitely a very, it can be a very strong note. Yeah. Um, especially for those that like a stronger fragrance. Dope. But well. um, yeah, we launched my fragrance in January. Let's let's smell. Let's oh, smell. You smell exactly. it now? I do. Oh. I do. I do. I did bring it. I, br I bought a bottle. <laughs> I bought all of it. I bought all of it. Did you? <laughs> I did bring you a bottle. Okay. Um, okay so okay. we launched my fragrance in January. It's called Exalté, and this was yes. a partnership I did with Bella Aura. They approached okay. me and said, "Hey, Fumi, we love your taste. We just love everything about you. Um, would you like to create your own fragrance?" And I thought, "Is this pinch me? Am I?" Am I going to wake up from You're a dream? You're living your like, dreams, girl. It was incredible. Like, our yeah. um, Bella Aura is based in Toronto. I'm based here Ooh. in Dallas. And our team that created our fragrance is based in France. Oh, girl. Oh. So you had the whole, like, shebang going. Oh, you know. We had to go to the best of the best. So, so. what do you think inspired your, your scent? Well, I thought to myself, if I could only make one fragrance, like, if this was it, I want something that's classic mm. and that's really going to be very memorable and, like, signature. Like, when you smell yeah. this, you think... Ooh, that girl has taste. And you do. Yeah, you see her, ladies and gentlemen? I feel like my whole nose is stuck up in your ass right oh. now. So I'm sorry about that. But I will, even my ass smell good. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been told. So I've been told. I don't know. That. I, haven't, I haven't experienced it. I love that. I love that. You know, I wanted to create a fragrance that would be signature. Like, yeah. someone would smell this and think, ooh, that person has taste. Yes. So, you know, we worked with a scent profile centered around my favorite fragrance note which is the Turkish rose I love a Turkish rose and a good classic floral fragrance but okay. I didn't want it to be like a you know like a grandma yeah I didn't yeah, want it to be yeah. too mature but I also didn't want it to be something that's like too trendy either mm -hmm. so we worked with our perfumer who has look at your shelf and he's probably created fragrances for some of like the top of the line fragrance okay. houses. So we worked with him. We went through several rounds mm -hmm. of this fragrance. And it had to be the right one to It had you, to I be bet. the right one. Like yeah. it had to open and it had to sit on my skin and it had to like yeah. just really um, perform the way and I wanted last. it to perform. And last. Yeah. And the thing about this fragrance, right, is it, it's a 25% perfume oil. So it's an extra de parfum. Um, one of the highest perfume oil concentrations that you can purchase. Love that. But... Although it's a long-lasting formula, it's not necessarily a fragrance that when you walk in the room, everyone's like, oh, she's here. Okay. Like, this is a fragrance that you have to have the pleasure. Like, you got to get a whiff of me as I walk by, baby. Exactly. Because that's, that's, that's the closest you might get. Exactly. You don't get to just <laughs> smell me by the water cooler. You, like, okay. You have to have the honor of being in my presence. Period. To be able to experience this. Period. Love so, that. So, that is how Exalté was born. And Exalté is French, and it means something to be celebrated. Yes, I love that. And I want people to feel celebrated, to feel lifted up every time they wear this. Okay, well, I am so excited. I'm geeked. Are you ready? To smell it. I'm so excited, yes. I'm passing I'm the baton. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, slow motion. Okay. Oh, I love it. Oh, girl, this smells rich. Ooh. I'm about to, can I? Please. Okay. Please. Ooh. I'm gonna let it. Let it, yes, you know, let it macerate. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Talk about a whiff, baby. The, ooh, Here you ooh, go. Ooh. Every time I smell it, it's like wow. the first time. Wow. Wow. Oh, no, that's good. Thank Girl, you. I feel like I just got an exclusive. Listen, oh, my God. Every time I spray this, I feel like I have an 800 credit score. Whoa. <laughs> no, that smells amazing. And I'm not even boosting. 
I don't boost. It, the thing is, right, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. You can be able to tell if I didn't like something because my face will get, like, real, like, you okay. know, it's, it automatically beautiful gets gowns. sour. Beautiful yeah, gowns. Beautiful gowns. Like, oh, the bottle's cute. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but this is really amazing. Like, Thank you. Good job. Thank you so good much. Good job, and congratulations on the relaunch. Yes. Congratulations on the launch in general Thank because you. not everybody can say that they have their own perfume yes. line. Not everybody can Especially, say that. Especially, um, I am the second black girl to create a fragrance in Paris. In Hello. France. Besides Rihanna, of course. Wow. Her, fra- wow. her fragrance is made in France by Love that. the guy that does fragrances for <laughs> Louis Vuitton. So now Fumi Monet has a fragrance that's made in France as well. Okay. Y'all... That sets us up perfectly for what we're about to get into, which is the theme of today's show. So, Fumi, you know what we're coming on here today, right? To do and talk about, right? To chit-chat. To chit-chat, okay. So we're talking today about the rich auntie effect, the rich auntie status, okay? okay? And I feel like that might resonate with a lot of the people listening because I think, I think, the people that are a part of our community are strong black women. Oh, absolutely. You know, you don't even have to just be black to be a rich auntie. No, absolutely not. Okay, so what do you think your definition of a rich auntie is? I'll let you go ahead and correct first. Well, it's interesting because the very first time, like, I was referred to as, fra- like, someone called me the fragrance auntie on social media. Yeah. And they said, Fumi, you're like our fragrance auntie because you give the best advice like your favorite auntie would. So everyone started calling me your favorite fragrance auntie and now like every time I get invited to do like an interview yes. or a publication, they're like, Fumi Monet, TikTok's favorite fragrance auntie on social media. And I'm like, oh, it is. Oh, I, love I that. am. I, I love am. That. And you are. You are. <laughs> so what do you think are some qualities that someone that might classify themselves? Because like I feel like anyone can call themselves a rich auntie. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, well earned that right. Of course. What are some qualities that you think you carry that makes you a rich auntie? Um, great question. So the very first time um, someone accidentally DM'd me where I could tell they meant to DM someone else mm. was when they said, see, I told you she was young. Don't know why she calls herself auntie. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm 32. Like, yeah. I'm in my 30s. Like, that's yeah. solidly auntie territory. I mean. I'm I, old enough to be someone's auntie. I right? don't blame you because for me, I'm, I'm 26. And if my brothers had children, I would technically be an auntie. Yeah. And I have little cousins. And and we're we're Nigerian, right? Mm -hmm. So our little cousins at home, sometimes they'll tell them to call us auntie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tell them straight up, don't call me auntie. Call me Cindy. Okay. That's my name. Our our parents are siblings. Let's not do that. But I don't even take offense to it anymore because Mm -hmm. in our culture... Saying, uh, calling someone that is your elder auntie, uncle is a sign of respect, and anyone should respect me. Exactly. I remember one time one of my cousins was like, Oh, hey, Fumi. I said, Oh, I'm not your maid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Auntie Fumi, Hello. please. <laughs> I'm not your mate. I changed your diaper. It's okay. auntie for me. No, look, I raised you, baby. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. Are we mates? Um, no, like, auntie to me is truly a state of mind. Like, it's not an yeah. age. You know, like, yeah, technically I can be someone's like, auntie, yeah. figuratively speaking. Yeah. But auntie's also a state of mind. To me, it's a state of elevation, mm, right? Mm. I'm no longer a struggling post-grad. Ooh. I've entered Hello. my soft stage yes. as an auntie. Yes. Right? yes. So, I mean, no matter how old you are, if you're 25, you're 30, you're 40, if you feel like you're in a stage of your life where you feel elevated, you feel confident, you feel just like you're in your me season, you are an auntie. Ooh, me season. I love that. So, when it comes to dating, let, let me just ask the question Are you single? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Let me tell you why I always say that. Because I firmly believe if you're not married, you are single. You know, so I, hey, I'm with you. I am not married, mm-hmm. but I am also very single. So okay. hello, yes to both. Okay. But no, like I'm single because I think that I'm also a therapist, and I always tell yes. people like it is important to go into stages of your life and situations when you feel ready. I you agree. Know? Like, it's kind of like going to the gym. Like, if you don't feel Oof. like you can commit to going to work out, like, you go, you know, people, I go once a month. Like, you know, I, I walk on the treadmill a little yeah. bit. I half-ass it. Yeah. I'm not committed to really working out. Like, yeah. but when you're, like, I have a friend who's committed every morning, 5 a.m. Oh, she's at the gym, honey. And she looks damn good. But I said, I don't have 5 a.m. commitment. <laughs> like, And I get that. I'm not there yet. that used to be me, but now I'm a 6.30 girl. Ooh. I'm a 6.30. <laughs> I'll get that one day. See, my thing is, I still have some jeans that fit. Like, when I get to my last pair okay. of jeans that are, like, 
struggling to come up, I'm going to say, you know what? I think I'm ready to make that transition. Mine is when I feel like I start looking fat on pictures oh. in my face. In my face. In my face. So because, like, though. I can always work with the body. Like, yeah. clothing-wise, I can always. Like, look at me right now. I mean, I'm not saying I'm wearing this. No, because, no. no my, I've been getting my body together. Okay. You look good, girl. What do you mean? Thank you. Thank you so much. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get my body together. But I feel like in uh, certain positions, I have definitely been like, okay, I'm not able to get the angles that I used to get before. Mm. Baby, it's time to go to the gym. Yeah. It's time to like stop complaining because the thing is, right, for me, all these days are passing by anyway if I don't work out. It's so true. I might as well. I, I might as well. But like you said, it's all about your journey and where you want to be because there was definitely times where I'm just like, you know what? I have no business doing that right now. Yeah. Maybe later, but yeah. I don't I need to do that right now. Yeah. I just knew like, you know, when I'm ready to work out, like I know I will be that person that's in the gym every morning at seven. Yeah. I'm drinking my green smoothie. I'm mm. doing the cardio. Yeah. I'm counting my steps. Like I'm yeah. doing all of that. Yeah. But when I'm not really like there, like, you know, you kind of half ass it. You work, you know, you do the workouts, but it's like, you know, maybe you do five reps instead of ten. Exactly. Like, like oh, I'm tired. Like maybe I'll just take walks for now. You no, know, I'll just walk on the <laughs> treadmill. I'll get my gym selfie yeah. and I'll be here again next month. Yeah. And I feel like dating is kind of similar. Like when you don't feel like you can really put your mind into getting to know somebody, yeah. it's like you're just half assing. It's like, oh, hey, yeah. how was your day? What you doing? <laughs> um, good morning, WYD beautiful. Every like time. Yes. WYD every time. What you up to? What are you trying to do this week? It's never plans, it's never any intention. Why? Okay, okay. I really don't want to interrupt you. Why do you think that? As women in, like, you know, more of a stronger, more established, successful position, why do you think we're the ones that are also establishing when we should go on dates, too? Because... And we, what dates we should go on? Because we have taken the reins in every other area of our life. You have mm. never sat back and said, okay, um, who's going to help me enroll in my classes? Who's going to do my homework? Who's going to apply for these jobs for me? You've never done that. You've never waited for somebody to help you write your paper or go in for a job interview. You've done the work that you needed to do to get there. And so sometimes like you look at, you start to see dating the same way. Like, yeah. well, if I don't make the plans for dinner, like we're not going to go anywhere. If, like, if I don't make mm. the plans for this vacation, we're just going to be at home. Yeah. Yeah. If, or if I don't like at least put it in your mind to make it think like it's your idea. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, a lot of what I did. And as an influencer, um, uh, I, I get invited to a lot of different events, mm -hmm. right? To where I can bring a plus one. So I remember the the last guy that I was seriously, seriously, seriously dating. Because, like, I was seriously dating someone, but... Yeah. I, I was seriously, seriously dating. Like, you know, yeah. we were, like, you know, there. Um, I remember, like... I had certain like events that I would like, you know, have him come to with mm -hmm. me, and he saw that as okay, yeah, these are our date days, which is great because mm -hmm. I thought those were our date days too. Mm -hmm. But he never planned anything outside of our first date, mm -hmm. and thought it was a problem that I brought it up. And I think as a strong woman, as a, a an accomplished woman that has your own and never really has to ask men for things, mm -hmm. um, they start to resent you for it. I feel like, mm -hmm. and it creeps its head in a very ugly way yeah. like kind of in a mean way yeah. like i mean you wanted to be the man so this is this is what you wanted to do you know walk away a red flag yeah you know the first time i realized that it's my fault like it was like i had to accept the blame for like Anything? taking charge in my relationship Ooh. was when a guy i was dating was able to plan a whole trip for his friends like they planned all he planned a whole guy's trip where, like, they, I think they were going to, like, see the World Cup. I don't know. They were going on a trip somewhere. This guy organized the whole trip. Booked the Airbnb. Hey, guys, these are the flights. Like, these are the activity. I said, oh, you can do that in a whole different country? But you can't figure out how to take us mini golfing on a Friday night. Hello. I realized this is my fault. Like, I really accepted this when this guy is capable of making plans when he wants to. You have an absolute point because not to that degree. I mean, he would go on like vacations with his cousins, but not to that degree. But this guy would go bowling by himself. He knew, he knew how to go. He knew exactly where to go, how to go. He knew that he could pay for it. Yeah. And it's like, that's the thing. These men don't like be broke because I mean, I don't, I don't go for, actually, maybe they do be. Maybe, maybe they do be. Maybe they do be. And I'm not even trying to like <laughs> offend nobody. I'm, I'm not, I promise I'm maybe not. They but <laughs> I'm not gonna do. You know, <laughs> some some of y'all got the money, some right? Some of them are living and on thoughts means. and prayers, and that's and, it. And some of y'all are moving on vibes. Like that's that really is the case, and I I can't do much about that. Yeah. I can only do my part. Yeah. But when I feel like my part is 
the entire relationship. Like, we on the same team. Yeah. Why can't we just why why can't we come to some type of agreement mm-hmm. here? And I like to think of like, you know, the rich auntie effect, especially as single women, as like the Wilona Woods effect. That's what I call it. Okay. I call it the Wilona Woods effect. So with Wilona Woods, right, she set a certain precedent for a different type of black woman back in the 70s, if you okay. think about it. You, do you, are you familiar mm-hmm. with Good Times? Oh, yeah. So think about it. We have Florida Evans, right? The matriarch. Yeah. The mother of the house. The wife that took care of James, yes. you know? She loved her husband. She did. Even though he was a little toxic sometimes. We, we, we saw that, right? I mean, black love. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> black, black, black love. Black love. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so we we saw Florida Evans, and for her best friend and neighbor to be Walona Woods, the mm-hmm. fabulous, single, mm-hmm. rich, well, rich because she didn't have other bills to pay. Yes, we all know they were broke. Okay, don't, don't, we, we don't have to go in the comments and start talking, oh, Walona mm-hmm. was broke too, we know. But for someone that didn't have three kids and a husband mm-hmm. to feed, she was good. Florida, I feel like a lot of times people forget that Florida was a maid on a whole different show. Oh, yeah. Like that's where they that like that came from. She was a maid, mm-hmm. and it was a spinoff. Yeah, I, I don't remember the show because it was for India Child. But uh, <laughs> you know, and the thing is, like, I grew up watching Good Times. Same. But I don't feel like I remember everything. Yeah. Um. So I don't remember the show she came from, but I absolutely do see yeah. how those two women contrast. Yeah. And one of them is just unapologetically she accepts her role as a mother, yeah. as the matriarch of the family Mm -hmm. and you have this other woman who is unapologetically single unapologetically unapologetically living her life on her own terms yeah and i think in this generation that we have with more women getting educations getting great jobs you know traveling doing all the things that they felt that they had to do like they couldn't do unless they were married right Uh uh-huh we are identifying more with her than the Florida Evans. And you know what's crazy? I feel like because so many people weren't able to maybe be vocal about how much they related to, uh, to Wilona, they ended up transforming her into another matriarch figure on the show. Mm-hmm. Yes, we saw her as like Auntie Le- Wilona that was like a, a, a mother figure to these other kids, like kind of like a god mom. Mm-hmm. And we saw that. But then they brought in... Janet Jackson and any other love interest Walona had and had to make her that other like you know figure. You don't want to. You don't want to give. You don't want to give the girls too many ideas. You don't. You don't because your place is supposed to be the 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 Florida. You're supposed to be taking care of kids in the kitchen. Exactly. That's that's what and as as Nigerian women, that's also what we were taught often a lot too. So it's so funny to see how it's pushed so much in different cultures as well. But then we have this resurgence of like the strong black woman in I feel like the 90s and I feel like a big show, I'm really a TV person right now by the way, but I feel like a big show that like kind of showed that in multiple different ways, in a multifaceted way. One, two, three, living Living single. single. I'm sorry, I should have shut it like that. I knew. See, no, I TV we too. were we were there together. So no, literally, living single was the other one. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that was a moment, yeah, and moment. that 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 might be that might be the clip. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, so we're on the same page. Yeah. So Living Single. Who was your favorite character on Living Single? Miss Khadija. Ooh, I love me some Khadija. And what I loved about Khadija is that like, and, and really just the show in general, they showed how an accomplished black woman mm-hmm. could also be in the dating world. Mm-hmm. And I loved that. I loved that at the very last season is when they gave Khadija her scooter. Mm-hmm. I love that because look, what it told me, Khadija didn't settle for any of those other guys Mm -hmm. that were at her doorstep. When it wasn't right, it wasn't right. You know who also, uh, actually, my favorite, I have two favorites, I have to say. 
Regine. Regine. Oh, the I, original I, bougie black girl. Girl, yes. Girl, Regine is the blueprint. I love her. Regine is the blueprint. So, Kim Fields, if you're ever watching this, which I don't think you ever will, but right. never it, say never. You know what? Let me not say never. It might come on her Kim Fields page, on her explore page. It might. I know she was nothing like her character. She talks about it in interviews and stuff like that. Um, saying like with. Um, uh, 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 Whitley, Whitley Gilbert. I know she was nothing like her character either, but like the way y'all played these characters that gave us the representation of girls who grew up wanting like luxury items and stuff mm-hmm. like that, whether they were given to it, like, you know, in their family, um, as like, you know, the, the, the foundation for how they grew up or not, y'all just set the blueprint right to make us feel like we could be those women. Absolutely. The many wigs that Regine had alone. Hello. Mm-hmm. How many wigs everybody else have now? Right. Yeah. Okay. Listen, yeah. Regine was the original baby girl. Sure was. Listen, living the baby girl lifestyle, understanding mm-hmm. that her beauty and her charisma was her currency. Sure was. And she had no problem using it to get exactly what she wanted. And I love that about her. And we have to not you know skip over the last single lady because you know let, let's be real uh uh what's the last one is it sinclair sinclair was not single so oh, okay. single. That's true. so yeah so that's my. I'm, like, I'm looking sinclair at them as a group was, yeah, yeah i look at them as a group i love sinclair yeah. she was not single maxine so. shaw attorney at maxine, law okay okay <laughs> oh my god why i'm so sorry keep talking Wait, no 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 it's us it's maxine us. shaw attorney at law maxine shaw attorney at law yes like i think that Maxine is probably my absolute favorite because she had so much going for her already and still didn't want to stop. I love that about her. I love that. Like, like she never put love before it. Mm-hmm. Even when she was with Kyle, mm-hmm. never did that come before what she was doing as a woman. And mm-hmm. we saw it in, um, I think, Half and Half did an episode with them as well. Mm-hmm. Like, she was still Maxine Shaw, attorney, attorney at, at law. law. Still, I love that. I love. And I really love the show because they didn't only focus on like one type of trope of a black woman. Yes, you know you had Maxine. Mm-hmm. You know the ambitious attorney. Yes, you know you had Khadija, the center of the group. She was the, the Carrie Bradshaw of the group. Yes, you know, the, she really was. She was the better friend, one. You know the better one. <laughs> Girl, you know I'm right. No, let's not talk about the unseasoned Carrie Bradshaw <laughs> versus the very seasoned, the <laughs> well-flavored, well-moisturized. Okay, well, because mo- Khadija stayed moisturized and pressed. And the hair? Baby. Oh. Khadija, it was shaking listen. with Khadija. What stiff wear? Stiff wear. Stiff wear. Her hair was never stiff. It was never stiff. Khadija was just like, and, and, and to see Queen Latifah, um, a beautiful black woman, but also a big black woman in such like that kind of like main character role. I, love I that. loved that. And that the fact that she was able to receive love as well. Oh my God. So many romantic interests. You Hello. Know? She was not like only designated to dating like, oh, only like the big chubby friend. You know, she dated yes. lots of fine men on the show. Exactly. She did. Cause let's be, even the man, she ended up Ooh. scooter. Fine. <sighs> I, I want a her. scooter. I loved her. I loved her. I loved that. Sinclair. You know, you have Sinclair, the Bohemian. Yes. You know, how many, all of us have a friend like Sinclair, you know? I, I know I do. I have Kinda a few ditzy, friends. Kind of ditzy, very, like, very good heart, though. Yes, you know? yes, yes. But their heads in the clouds. Woo, woo, woo. But we all have a friend like that. <laughs> yeah. Because they also, like, they just love you so wholeheartedly as yeah. well. Yeah. And I feel like I love that they showed a beautiful, healthy relationship in her and over to yes i really love that Mm -hmm. like because they did show a bit of the toxic side with maxine and um kyle yeah but they really showed a great beautiful dynamic of like a man just wanting his black woman and that's it yeah that was nobody called him a simp yeah nothing he he wasn't seen as a simp at all that was his girl period he loved her and then we see men like future calling and, and and what's the other one that hosts the other podcast? I'm at like whatever the the podcast is calling like Russell Russell Wilson a simp or or a lame because he loves his woman. We lost the formula. We lost it. Where is it? Got lost with mumble rap. <laughs> you know what? There is some correlation there. You know, it's one of those fuck around and you're gonna find out. It Max. used to be meet me at the altar in your, your white dress. dress. What now it's. 
I ain't worried about no bitches. I ain't, I ain't worried about it. <laughs> you know? It's like some on the late night. Oh me and that so And that's my song, too. Difference. I can't even lie. I'm a little toxic mean, when I love the future I and do. the Drake's and the 20 it's my, Savage. It's my dirty secret. It is mine, too. I can't. It's it's like my my guilty pleasure. I yeah. can't even lie. I love it. Because that was my breakup song. Oh. Girl, that's why I know every word. I understand. It was my breakup song in, in college. I used to like. I used to like hood niggas back then, y'all. It happens. We've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to like. But we move. To, we we do <laughs> we move. move. We do move. Levels. Because that is not my type anymore. I was just telling my friend, like, I was showing her, like, some of my different exes. And she's like, girl, these look like the same, man. I'm like, well, I got a type now. Now, now I have a type. Yeah. And it's not hood niggas anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but hood niggas deserve, it's deserve love, it's too. Called, it's called, like, leveling up. Leveling yeah. up. It's called growth. growth. What is going on? <laughs> I don't like this. Girl. Oh, my God. Oh, the hand gestures oh. and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was there. But it was no, there. it's right. Like, it's growth. Being able to, like, you know, understand that, okay, I did that. And yeah. that's just part of what, like, this has happened in my life. But yeah. what can I do to move forward? Like, what can I do to be better? Like, what can I do to also make sure I'm getting the things I need? Yes. You know? You can't yeah. always think about, okay, what am I making sure that I'm giving to this person? Because then you neglect yourself. You don't get anything that you need. And as women, we do that too so often. Much. And which is why, circling back, full circle moment, mm -hmm. I love the rich auntie movement so mm -hmm. much the black girl luxury movement whatever you want to call it soft life whatever you want to call it i love the movement so much because it's us reclaiming our time absolutely it's us being able to say you know what y'all might not be able to provide this for me right now so i will do it for myself yeah. and now i've set the bar for where i want you to meet me oh absolutely and that's really what to me it's about it's not yeah. saying like oh i need you to do this yeah. it's saying hey i'm doing this yes. so you either meet me where i'm at or you get left behind. You know? and, and it's okay to get left behind. Yeah. I think it's an ego bruise sometimes to guys because they're like, dang, man, like, you know, I, I had you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the thing they like to say is, I mean, at least I fucked though. No. Mm. Don't feel special because of that. That's Especially fine. if it wasn't good. Exactly. <laughs> Don't let me tell my part of the story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> look. Look. Because nine times out of ten, you probably didn't. Okay. Listen. Niggas be lying on my nerve. You, you know. know. <laughs> Men are out here with the stamina of a high schooler on prom night. Okay. Talking about me blowing back. So I'm like. Mm. No bad. No bad. We need to get rid of that rhetoric, it's, okay? Okay. We need to get rid of that rhetoric. Let's just stop spilling your tea. I stop think men are sometimes a little bit. Men are sometimes like the messiest men, like people on earth. Oh, absolutely. You know, they they really they love to spread their tea. I read this tweet once and it said, "Think of the messiest person you know." It's, it's a, man, a man, isn't, isn't it? it? <laughs> yeah, I thought that. He has all this. It's too. true. <laughs> but I mean, in real life, like I really appreciate that women are seeing this because yes, our and Our speaking out about it came from a generation where like they still very much prioritized like i always make a joke that my mom's um levels of hierarchy are jesus family and then her job you know Ooh. and that seems like to be all they really center their lives around yeah you know, yeah that sounds church, just like my mother taking care of their family yep. my mom's a nurse so going to work my you mom's know, a doctor my mom's an eye doctor so yeah care of people yeah and it seems like our generation is saying, okay, I can be like, I can be more than that. Yes. Like I can be a mother, but I can also have a career that I love. I can also have, um, these, you know, side, you know, side, um, side hustles. Yeah. You know, I can have hobbies. I can decide I want to travel. I can like anything I want to like because I can do it. Exactly. I think that the more women that have these, like we, we're hearing every day of the, first woman to do this or the first black woman to be a cover of this or the first uh or the second black woman to you know create a perfume in france okay? okay you know what i'm saying <laughs> so we we're continuously hearing about these firsts and these accomplishments of women that look like us now and i love it because what it's telling me is that like women are not going to slow down no. black women specifically are not going to slow down we're going to continue to be the most educated in the country we're going to continue to reach all these feats we're going to continue to be in these boardrooms and stuff like that and there's nothing that you can do or insult in any way to make us stop doing this because they think that by calling us oh rich auntie or auntie or a single woman or what, what do they call it a spinster oh. they think by calling us these things that 
it's now going to turn our focus into wanting to prioritize a relationship over uh, the accomplishments that we want. But we're telling y'all, we can do this whenever we want. Oh, absolutely. And we can do this better than you as well. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't mean to like sip on toes when I say stuff like that because I don't think I'm better than anyone except men. You know, I'm joking. Right, I'm, yeah, joking I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm the president of the Man Haters Association. <laughs> oh, so <no. laughs> People would think that man, I probably am now. Man slander <laughs> is accepted here. Okay. Well, then I have a lot to say. I have a, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I'm it's joking. true though because yeah. um, I did a day in the life video yeah. and I said, you know, like this is what I did as, you know, a therapist and then this was like six months ago when I first went to test drive my car and put a yeah. deposit down and this guy I mean everybody that was commenting was kind of you know saying things like oh I love to see a woman working and living her life and living yeah. her dream this yeah. is so inspiring Ooh, one dusty man yes. commented and said all that and no man I thought Ooh, is that an insult like why because I did do all this without a man Ex- and that you baby are you giving me my flowers right now yeah i was like oh you 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 thought you ate you thought you ate I thought you ate and that's what I take my, your my dad said that he said yeah. but you did do all that yep without a man yep. like comma without a man why is it that our fathers are telling us i want you to have your money before you ever because go to you know we'll take care of them <laughs> Listen, they said, listen, baby girl, get the coins up because I know the girls are the ones you that make sure it? they take care of their parents. I thought it was because my father wanted me to never be manipulated. Oh, I mean, my dad always said to me growing up, don't ever put yourself in a position where you can be a doormat to somebody. That part. When, when someone feels like they can walk all over you, they will. And we are back. We're back to close the show, guys. So go ahead, Fumi. I know you had some words on your chest about why you think it's so important to be or have that rich auntie status. You know, it's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. The rich auntie is comfortable. Yeah. She is confident. She is unapologetic. It is not about how much money is in her bank account. Yeah. It is about her state of mind. Because you might not be rich in money. You yeah. might not have a million dollars in your bank. It's not even about that. It's not about that. You're rich in spirit. Yeah. You're rich in relationships. You are rich in having peace of mind. You know, those are all things that you can't put a price point on. Yeah. You know, everyone says, oh, rich auntie, like, you know, you drive this, you have this, you have this bag, you, you know, you do this. But it's like, okay, but also I go to bed every night knowing no one's mistreating me very i mean that's peace of mind that you can't put a price tag on you can't you know i have abundant relationships in my life you know healthy friendships good relationships with the people that matter the most to me i have great experience i'm rich in experiences yeah you know sometimes i just go outside and look at the stars you know sometimes i just like sit by my window and watch the rain you know, it's like you're rich in experience. You're rich in so many things that don't always necessarily have a price. And if you are rich in the bank, too, it's just icing on the cake. Yeah. But it's all a state of mind. It's the rich auntie state of mind. And that's why so many women now are adopting it. Because you yes. don't have to be a mule. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to be a mule auntie. You don't have to be the burden auntie that's carrying the burdens. We're not forced into these positions anymore. No. You can be the soft auntie. The auntie that's living her best life on her own terms. And that's what I wish for everybody. We're reclaiming the original Wilona Woods. Absolutely. So to close off the show, I usually like to ask my guests, um, what are you going to choose not to settle for this week? Pertaining to the subject. So I can go first. This week, I'm going to choose not to settle for being hopeless. Oh, I love that. I think you taught me a good lesson today that just because I've experienced bad things doesn't mean that that is what my story is written on Mm -hmm. because the chapters are not finished being written. Absolutely. You know, I'm in my editing process right now. You know what I'm saying? So the author ain't done yet. The author is not done. Hello. The author in question is me. So I think it's very important to just recognize that like, Okay, yeah, I have been hopeless mm-hmm. in, in this aspect. I have been thinking that just because I've had these experiences or I've been told certain things or I've been, um, certain, certain values might have been impressed on me that didn't stick because yeah. a lot of things didn't stick for me. Yeah. Um, does not mean that that is what is going to be my complete story. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people like to think that, oh, only women without fathers get treated tor- terribly. I have a very present father. Mm-hmm. So that's not the story. Mm-hmm. The story lies in the people that are uh, out, 
outside of us, yeah. you know, that doesn't even become a psychology thing anymore. That's a sociology thing, mm-hmm. how you treat other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and not everybody's taught the same way how to treat people. So I'm just trying to still learn that experience is everything and not every person is going to be the same. So although I do have my sentiments about trusting men, mm-hmm. I do believe that there is a light at the end of the tunnel somewhere. I think one thing, it's interesting that you brought up trust. My sister and I talked about trust over the weekend. Mm-hmm. I said, trust is earned. Yeah. You know, it's not a, it is not a privilege yeah. that you just get and you get to not, uh, you get to walk all over it. Yeah. Take it for granted. Trust is earned. And when you fight for trust, like anything in life, when you fight for it, it's more meaningful to you. Yeah. When you earn it and you know, like, this is what I had to do to gain this person's trust, yep. to gain whatever becomes more personal to you and you're not willing to just let it becomes this delicate thing yeah that you hold very preciously because now it's like oh like i did all this she trusts me right and now i don't want to let that go you know hello because once it's gone hey i'm not saying it's impossible to bring back but that work that you did it's gonna be a lot harder yeah it's gonna be a lot harder you know um and i love that and i hope that you take that to heart because it's something that it doesn't happen overnight. Like, you don't just yeah. wake up with hope. Yeah, but it's, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's just this, this idea that, like, you don't, whatever has happened to you in the past, like, whatever you've, whatever that, whatever people have brought to you or you've accepted, yeah. it does not mean you have to continue to accept it. Yep. It does not mean, like, this is all that's out there for you. Yeah. Like, your potential is limitless. There is no cap on what you can do. Yeah. And there is also no cap on the love that you can give and receive. Mm-hmm. There's no okay. This is all I can get. Listen, I'm still waiting for more. I'm just kidding. More chestnut is married. I can't say that. <laughs> more chestnut is married. I respect the institution of marriage. <laughs> um, but no, seriously. So like, is method man. I know all the good ones. All the '90s heartthrobs. All of them. Uh, now, who are we left with? <laughs> but at least they have black women on there. I do appreciate hashtag that. black love. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> So, um, what are you going to choose not to settle for this week? This week, because I am very much a busy person, Mm -hmm. I am accepting or not settling for the idea that I have to do everything. I have to carry everything. I am working on delegating. I am not settling on Fumi being the person that has to hold all the burdens in my life and all the responsibilities. I'm understanding that I also deserve a break. You do. I deserve a break. I deserve to yeah. not have to feel like everything is on me. Yeah. I can delegate tasks to someone. I can, I can trust someone to complete tasks that I know I don't need to give my attention to. Yeah. And that is something that is an ongoing thing for me, mm. but I will Especially no longer settle for that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to settle for just every day. Is, oh, I don't want to settle for 16-hour days every day. Girl. It's not giving soft life. Yeah, you know, it's not. I don't want to be a boss babe. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it now because I'm, I'm doing what I need to do, you know. Yeah. But my ultimate goal in life is not to just to be this boss babe that's doing 80-hour weeks every week, you yeah. know. Yeah. I'm trying to build something for myself so that I can enjoy. I can enjoy my family. I can enjoy my friends. I can enjoy my romantic partner, you yeah. know. My family, like anything. It's just a foundation that you're, you're building yeah. so that it will be solid enough that, for example, when the right person comes into your life, they don't try to minimize. Oh, you're just a content creator. You just make pictures on Instagram. It's never been no that, way. baby. No way. I'm a businesswoman. It's a business. It's, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know? Entrepreneur I pay, status. I pay, listen, my taxes might be a little higher than yours. You know? Okay. We all, we all well, earn it. We're earning the money honestly here. Yeah. So for that, I say that, you know, um, it's just really important to know that like, you don't have to be a mule mm. just because you're in your boss babe, rich auntie era. Yeah. You also deserve to have moments of peace, of softness in your life. Yeah. And you also deserve to have someone that can recognize when you need those things too. Yeah. What can I do to help you? Exactly. Like what, you know, and that's, that's really what it comes down to. Like being in a relationship where there's give and take. Mm-hmm. I give you something and you also give me something. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes you give me something and I give you something. Hello. It goes back and forth, you know. But it's about balance. When there's no balance, now one person is the, the, the person that has all the burden. Yeah. And, um, hey, that's, that's, how become, that's how people can become jealous haters. <laughs> don't be a jealous hater. Don't be loud and wrong. So, don't end up on our segment. Don't. <laughs> don't do that. 
So, um, oh, that is going to be it for today's episode of Settling, ladies and gentlemen. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode. I feel like every time I record another episode, I say, oh, my God, this is my favorite. But honestly, Fumi, you were a joy, and you brought amazing uh, energy, uh, facts. You're smart, you're brilliant, and you're so talented. And I want to give you your flowers while you're here. Like, Please, thank you so much for being a great example to a lot of women that want to do their own thing Mm -hmm. and they like they they might not even know what it is you know Mm -hmm. because like there's there's so many different like things in niche content or not really having content to like know know what you want to do at all or just like just knowing that you want to do something outside of just what you're identified as you know you're not just fool me the therapist Mm -hmm. you're not you're the perfume lady the perfume auntie okay So I want to thank you so much for coming on. And um, y'all can go ahead and connect with Fumi. All her information will be in the description box down below and the show notes on the podcast. Um, And let us know uh, where we can reach you. Thank you. So um, I am on all my social medias, Fumi Monet. I make it very easy to find me. Yeah. Um, It's Fumi Monet anywhere. So uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm on I'm not on Twitter much, but I have a Twitter. I'm on YouTube, and I'm hoping to continue to expand my social media presence. I do have my perfume, Exalté, which is... Did you... Do you still have it? Oh, somebody has it. Somebody has it. Somebody has it. Anyway, it's somewhere. I let someone smell it, and I'm like... We're going to find it I know every time people smell it, they're like, I'm Oh, there it is. It's in your bag. Oh, it's in my bag. My bad. (laughs) My friend, like, I went to a dinner, and I let my friend smell this, and she, like, put it in her bag. I'm like... No, uh-uh, this is no a sample. <laughs> She's like, girl, it's so good. I need I'm like, no, it's a sample. Um, so I have my perfume Exalté. It is out. And if you Google Exalté by Fumi Monet, it's the first thing that pops up. It's the only thing that pops up. Love that. But so y'all make sure to get her perfume, please. Please get it. Support. Um, this is I mean, this is a really big deal to like launch a fragrance that's a luxury niche mm-hmm. fragrance. In this space, there is not very many people that look like me. And it makes me proud to have created something that's so beautiful and so widely accepted. I've met so many brand owners yeah. like of fragrances that, you know, I've met them and they said, Fumi, I've heard about your perfume. I'm like, oh, and you heard about my perfume all the way in Australia? You you belong in those you rooms know? though. That's that's what that means. So I'm very glad that we're able to showcase Exalte. I'm yes. very glad that we're able to showcase your brand you. and who you are as a person. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much again for coming on. And props to you. You guys probably would never guess this, but we literally met oh. at an event. Like, at an event like two for social ago. media. Yes, like, for yeah, social two media. weeks ago, yeah. And I just want to say kudos to you too. Like, kudos thank you. for all your accomplishments and everything Thank you're you. doing. Um, I'm going to call you young lady. Cause I, ah. listen, <laughs> I'm <like> auntie. <laughs> young lady, <laughs> sis, you are doing such an amazing job. Thank and I just want to tell you like your future is so bright. That Do really not ever feel like there's somebody that needs to dim your light. Your light is so bright. You will attract some moths, but you will also attract people that want to keep elevating that light focus on those people yeah the moths don't matter you're doing such an amazing job this podcast is so incredible thank you and um, i'm just so honored to be able to come on your platform thank and you. share these hopefully something that's helpful oh no you dropped gems, gems. Baby, the entire time so thank you so much because like that that means a lot coming from you and it just means a lot in general because i i get you know a little self daddy sometimes but I think it's important to like you know give yourself a pat on the back sometimes. You should give yourself a pat on the back. Hello, this jacket's kind of (laughs) bulky. This jacket's kind of bulky, but yes, virtual pads, airdrop or airdrop pads. I got you. I got you. Okay, Okay. perfect. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) So that will be all for today's episode of Settling. Y'all can go ahead and reach us at Settling Podcast on Instagram. Not on Twitter. Girl, I don't know what's going on on Twitter. I'm just not going to even step mm-hmm. onto that. It's Twitter. And we are it's trying Armageddon to venture. Right we are trying to venture into um, TikTok. So we might get some news about that on the next episode. But just definitely reach us, uh, reach out to us on uh, Settling Podcast um, at gmail.com for any business inquiries. And ask Settling Podcast ask settling podcast at gmail.com for any advice questions that you guys might have in the future we are relaunching so this is season two baby and i hope you guys enjoy this episode so let's settle or not bye guys bye.